I saw something coming out from Llama Index a few days ago about something called RAG CLI. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what is RAG CLI? And for those who don't know what CLI is, can you also explain what CLI means? Sure. So what is a CLI? CLI stands for Command Line Interface. It's a text-based user interface, meaning that instead of interacting with some graphical user interface, then you type the commands in your operating system. And if you have any operating system, Windows, Machine, Mac, or Linux, you already have a shell or a CLI tool. So in Linux and Mac, it's the terminal, right? The uh, black window usually. So this is a CLI tool and Windows also have that. So CLI tool is a text-based user interface where you just type commands instead of interacting with some buttons and windows and graphical user interface. So you kind of have to know how to interact with the computer. Basically, it's a window that you can talk with your computer from these command lines instead of a user interface. Yes, absolutely. How's it related and, to RAG? Aha. Uh -huh. So that's a good question. This Llama index is very popular for creating this library for implementing this RAG systems. And RAG, as you know, is retrieval augmented generation, which is essentially when you inject external knowledge base into an LLM and then you interact with the LLM. But why do they have this RAG CLI? It's a CLI because if you are a person who don't want to, for instance, write some graphical user interface and then implement, for example, a chat to PDF use case, then you can do it simply inside the terminal, right? So for instance, you have a bunch of PDF documents or no, text documents, and you want to implement a question answering system on top of that, but you don't want to deal with graphical user interfaces, Jupyter Notebook, so on and so forth, then you can do it directly in terminal while you are in terminal. So that's a use case, which for a lot of people who are developers, programmers, that's a very interesting tool because they don't need to leave the terminal. They can, let's say, ask questions about their documents while they are in terminal. Yeah, so it's it's really convenient, right? So you don't have to really build a UI on top of the backend and the models and stuff, and you can just achieve your goal from the terminal, basically. By the way, my, my seven-year-old daughter is talking with Olama through terminal. So fun fact. Yes, yes. It depends on the use case, what kind of person you are. Typically, if you are a developer, programmer, you definitely need to deal with terminal, right? But if you are not a technical programmer, you barely use Terminal, right? right. If you have Windows or Mac, there is graphical user interface with everything. But there is a GUI for that. So you interact with the computer via GUIs. But yes, Terminals are also very helpful. I always use Terminal. Yeah, you're a hardcore hacker. <laughs> what, what, so, so for the RAG CLI, what are some of the use cases that our audiences can potentially leverage? And how can we use it? Absolutely. So any kind of RAG that you want to implement, let's say if it is chat over your documents and by document, it could be text file, PDF file, image files, right? Video files, things like that. Then you can use that RAG CLI tool for that purpose. So as I said, the good thing is the convenience is that you don't need to leave the terminal. But another use case that I found it very interesting is for example, you can implement a RAG on top of Linux commands, as Linux has thousands of commands, right? And you cannot remember every single one of them. So what you can do is you can implement a RAG application for Linux documentation. And then when you don't know how a command works, you can essentially, while you are in terminal, then you can you know, ask the question, what this command is and how that works. And it will just go through the documentation, find the answer, and then it will give you the answer. So it's different from just displaying the menu or the help um, page on the terminal that you have to read the whole thing yourself. Sometimes it can be very, very long. Yes. 
So if you want to see, there is a man command, right? Man CP, it's going to show you like um, all the manual for the CP copy files command, but usually it's long, right? So you don't want to really <laughs> read that. Uh, what you can do is, let's say you can get all of these manuals, right, as a text and then store them in some kind of text file. And then you can use this RAG CLI tool to basically just, you know, parse the text, chunk it, and then embed them, save them inside some vector database. And then after that, you can ask questions, right, what CP command is, right, how CP command works. And then it will go search through all of those documents, like Linux documents, find the answer and then show you that. So that's a very good use case if for this RAG CLI, if you want to, you know, use it. As I said, let's say if you have a lot of PDF files and you just want to ask questions about them, but you don't want to write a full-fledged application that had GUI, open in the browser, things like that. Again, this RAG CLI is a very interesting tool for that. Yep. All right. So I'll just show you how to install this CLI. It's pretty straightforward. They have this documentation here. So this is the command pip install llama index. So you need llama index for sure, because it's part of the, like a prerequisite for the CLI tool. And for CLI, they are using ChromaDB for storing and embedding the vectors by default. And then after that, you can essentially just run the CLI with this command. And if you do that, it just shows you the different parameters for the RAG. So Llama index CLI, I have already installed the CLI tool. So when I run it with these options, RAG and age, it shows me basically different parameters that they can add. So if I want to, let's say, read a file or multiple files, then I can use this dash F. And then if I want to ask questions about those files, then I can, let's say, use this. So I'll show you how that works. But before that, because RAG is a kind of application where you interact with large language model, right? Therefore, although it is local for response generation, you still need to send the context and the prompt to the LLM. Therefore, you need some kind of LLM. If you're using OpenAI, then you need to give the OpenAI API key. Um, but if you want to use it even completely locally using Olama and other open source models, then you can set up that. I'll just briefly explain how to do it. So what I have done, I have already given my... OpenAI API key. So you just say export OpenAI API key and you just give the API key and then it's going to be used as long as you are in terminal. Okay, I already have a couple of PDF documents in a folder called data. And what I want to do is to create a rag, like chat to PDF kind of thing over these documents these two papers. So if I want to show you the papers, you can see here that there is this paper in context learning. And then there is another one that is ML Copilot. So I have these two papers in that folder. And now what I want to do is to embed them, put them inside the vector database so I can ask questions about them. So I say llama index CLI rag and then dash F and I give the path to my directory, which is data. And you hit enter, you wait. It takes a few seconds to read. Okay, so it's done. Now- so Chatting with both um, files at the same time. So you can just- So when you ask a question, it's going to just go and search through all of the documents. So if you have- 10 documents, it's going to just go and search through all of them. Yes. Awesome. Because it's a question answering system, right? So if there was only one file, it would just search only one file. But now I have to, it's going to do that. So in dash Q, and then you have to type your question between double code. So let's say 
uh, what is in context learning mm -hmm. so now it's a standard rank it's going to go and search through all of the text chunks that i have and then it's gonna just find give it to open ai chat gpt and then it's going to generate a response for me so context learning is the process of training a model right so on and so forth so this is coming from this paper right no, another one for the second paper so for the second paper sure so let me just change this what is ml copilot copilot yeah. okay it's a framework that utilizes large language models to develop machine learning solutions for novel tasks and if you come here and open that so a state of the art llm to develop ml solutions for novel tasks so you can see that actually it's uh, coming from the text that is inside the pdfs um so this is essentially how it works. If you want to add more files later, you can give the path to the file or files if you have more than one. So what I was thinking in terms of having a good use case for creating a rag on Linux commands, for instance, right. right? So what we can do, we can add, let's say, so as I told you, if there is like man CP, it's going to show me the manual for the CP commands. So what I want to do, I want to get this text and then store it inside a text file and then add that text file into my rag. So yeah. how can I do that? We add, so the, I, uh, we add this file to the same location in the data file. So you we Yes. Can... It could be inside the same location or in the same folder or somewhere else. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a text file, call it. So now here, if I open this file, you can see that the content is here. So it's as essentially it's a right so this cp.txt is created now what i can do i can just say okay go and read this file cp.txt so it's going to read the file process it embed that and put it inside my vector database so it's done and now i can just ask questions about this this file so yes just show me an example. Okay, while we're waiting, so once we rag a file, process it and embed, and once we go through the whole pipeline for a single file, we have to redo it. If I go back to the file and then ask questions about the other two papers, I, I don't need to redo this, right? You don't need to redo this because this is a regular rag. So whatever you add into your vector database, it's going to stay there unless you, let's say, delete or remove the data from your vector database. Otherwise, it's going to stay there. So this is the result. You can see that. If I wanted to read the, the manual, it was very tedious, laborious to go through all of that. It's probably a lot easier to read something like this, right? Or, you can even ask questions, just give me examples of how to copy a file or a folder from somewhere to somewhere else and all that. So it will give you like exactly that command instead of you going to the Google and search for that command. So this is one use of using this RAG CLI. Yeah, this is so, very convenient because I, if I have a UI GUI and I have to upload my file to ask questions, I have to upload like one at a time. But this is like, you can have a whole directory of database that you can query and ask questions very easily. Yes. Yes. You can read the documentation here. A couple of points that I would like to mention. You can obviously customize um, RAG CLI. As I mentioned, they are using a Chroma DB as a vector database. But if you would like to use Quadrant, Pinecone, or some other vector database you can do that even if you want to change different pipeline or if you want to even let's say they are using this module simple directory reader to parse the the files and there is certain number of files support like the files that here you can read them if there is a file that is not 
part of this module, then you will get some errors. For that, you can go and add your own, let's say, file parser into the list or customize it. So in order to do that, you just need to follow this documentation here. You need to create a file. And then inside that file, you basically just do all of the configuration that you want. I want to use this vector database, for instance, and then you define and give your own vector database. Or if you want to use a different LLM, then here you specify that one. Um, so if you want to add different type of file support, if that file is not already supported by this uh, module, you can do all of that and then run it, right? If you go through these four steps, then you can essentially r run your own RAG CLI with all of the parameters that you have defined. So that's the customization. Thank you, Mehdi. I want to ask one more question. So it looks like the vector database used by default in here is ChromaDB. Um, mm -hmm. Is that the Im embedded data really stored? Where Where is it really? ChromaDB database is this locally stored, right? So you can come to this, um, because here it's not explained where it is, but if you come to their source code, it's open source, then when you come to this get cached, right? Cache DIR, which is the location of that actual vector database that it's stored. So if you come to the implementation of that, depending on your operating system, on your operating system, if you have Linux, Mac, or Windows, then here it tells you where it is that, you know, the that vector database is stored. So for me, it's actually here, right? So if I come and then I say, go to this folder. So CD, then library, caches, llama index, and then, right, rag CLI. So if I go to rag CLI, then I can see my actual Chroma DB. So if I delete this, let's say delete this folder completely, then all of these files, the PDF files plus this text file, all of them are going to go away, right? And so then I have to parse them again. Do it, let's say, yes, all over again. Otherwise, it's going to be there so I can, let's say, use that. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. I guess that's it for today. Thank you, Mehdi.